Hello and welcome back to goldstocktrades.com. Today we have a new and special guest to our program, Peter Dickey, President, CEO, and Director of Quantum Rare Earth Developments Corporation. It's traded on the TSAX Venture uh, as QRE, and it's traded on the US OTC as QREDF. Thank you, Peter, for being here with us today. Well, thanks very much for having me. So, Peter, tell me about niobium. What is niobium? Why should investors look into niobium right now? Well, niobium is uh, uh, one of these sort of minor metals that uh, is largely unknown or unheard of in the in the uh, metal space, uh, primarily because it's it's mined in from a limited number of mines right now. There's a limited number of deposits in the world, and uh, it's it's largely a uh, a producer to end user market. So there's not a large uh, trading platform, should we say, for niobium. Now, having said that, it is a integral part of the steel industry in particular. Uh, it's used primarily as a steel hardener. And so it is a very large worldwide market, although, as I mentioned, it, it is a uh, largely restricted to a sort of producer to end user. So it's not in the press a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it seems like niobium's uses are growing, especially with the green technologies, uh, with the wind turbines. Uh, and and it's, it, I saw that it was even considered a strategic metal by the U.S. as its essential for national security and, and making in jet engines. Could you tell us about niobium's uses and, and the market for niobium going down, uh, going down the next, in the near term, medium term, and long term? Certainly, certainly. Niobium, primarily niobium is produced in the form of uh, ferroniobium, which is used as a steel hardener. Now, there are competing products out there that are also used as steel hardeners that your listeners may be more familiar with. One of them is vanadium, the other is molybdenum. Now, the uh, benefits of using niobium is that it is a finer grain material, so therefore produces a harder, finer grain steel, thereby saving weight. Now, weight is a major consideration in particularly in the automotive industry, where people are trying to extend fuel economies on vehicles and if you have a lighter vehicle you automatically save fuel economy. In other instances because of the finer grain nature of the steel that's produced with niobium there are certain applications where you cannot replace it. Uh, one in particular that I, I like to point out is high pressure gas pipelines. Because of the fine grain nature and the uh, of the steel produced um, it, it is mandatory requirement for for fine for uh, high pressure gas pipelines. On the other aspect, of, uh, the other aspect of niobium in in the use is in super alloys, and this is particularly important in the U.S. And one of the reasons why it is being considered as a strategic uh, metal is because in the aeronautics industry and by extension into the defense industry, uh, the Super alloys created with niobium are integral to, for instance, jet thrusters where there's super high heat applications involved. Mm -hmm. um, there's other applications, MRI machines, the magnets, those are made with niobium as well. Uh, there's a wide variety of uses that, that the general public are not aware of with niobium, but uh, certainly it's a, it's a uh, hot in demand commodity and a growing commodity, as you mentioned, with green technologies in particular. Mm. So it's really interesting that niobium has been considered strategic uh, for the United States. Where in the United States can you find niobium and are there, uh, are there uh, significant deposits in the United States? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Um, it, at the moment, uh, I'll talk on a worldwide stage at the moment. There are only three mines in the world that produce niobium as a primary commodity. Two of those are in Brazil, and one is in the province of Quebec in Canada. As far as undeveloped deposits are concerned, uh, there's really only four or five in the world that are talked about. 
Um, there is only one in the United States, and that happens to be in southeast Nebraska, and that's the Elk Creek Carbonatite Deposit. Now, that's a deposit that we own now. Uh, it was owned and developed by Molly Corp back in the 1970s and 80s, and where they did extensive drilling and preparation in order to put that deposit into production. And then with uh, outside factors came into play in the late 80s, early 90s, they walked away from the project and uh, fortunately it sat available and we, we acquired this uh, two or three years ago and are carrying on with the uh, excellent work that Molycorp did from uh, two decades ago. Hmm. And I saw that recently you announced assay results from the Elk Creek Advanced Project, the summer 2011, uh, from the summer 2011 drill campaign, and you were able to update and increase uh, the 43101 resource estimate. Could you tell us about those results? Yeah, I'd love to. The uh, As you mentioned, we, we do have a 43101 uh, inferred resource on this, which we published uh, just short of a year ago, and that was based on Molly Corp's drilling that was done uh, 20 to 30 years ago, which a portion of which we reassayed. And what we did is we worked with the engineering firm that produced that report. Uh, they saw a couple of areas of the deposit where they weren't 100% confident of the continuation of the mineralization, so we cited our drill holes based in part on their advice. And uh, lo and behold, we actually, we not only hit the niobium zone that we were targeting, but we hit very extensive intercepts of uh, high-grade niobium that, that uh, in virtually all cases exceeded the overall deposit grade that they had given us credit for. So we're particularly excited about that. Um, it not only increases the overall tonnage of the deposit, but uh, also uh, could likely uh, increase the overall grade of the deposit as well. And we'll have a new report on that in the next uh, two to three months published. Mm -hmm. And you're also, uh, I saw that you just uh, did a financing uh, to, um, to fund your preliminary economic assessment uh, in the first half of 2012, uh, and you're also working on the metallurgy. Could you tell us about the team that's working behind the metallurgy and how, and the the impact uh, on on the PEA on the company and, and what sort of that because you'll be going into mine development. Um, so can you tell us what sort of catalyst you're you're seeing in 2012? Certainly, certainly. We um, uh, those people, those of your listeners that are familiar with the uh, niobium process and niobium mining. Uh, will be aware that niobium is a notoriously difficult metal to separate from a from a processing point of view. Uh, as a perfect example, the the largest highest grade mine in the world recovers approximately 50% of the niobium in the rock that they have there. So what we did is when we looked at this deposit, we realized that that there was a lot of expertise going to be required in order to to uh, carry forth and put this this project into production. So beginning uh, in the spring of last year, we started to uh, talk to some people, made some additions to both the board of directors and the advisory board, and those include um, a couple of uh, very seasoned uh, mining engineers, and in particular one fellow uh, who's, who's integral to the development of this, who's a uh, chemical engineer. He's semi-retired, as he calls it, um, only because he's he's been at this for um, almost five decades now. Um, and uh, from a metallurgical point of view, you know, he, he works extremely closely with the lab that we have working on this. And, uh, you know, I believe that, that with today's technologies, uh, we will certainly be able to to uh, crack the rocks, as they say, uh, and come up with a um, you know an economically viable method of of extracting the niobium there. And certainly, our preliminary results uh, indicate that we're working well towards that path. Um, and then, of course, you know, following the the metallurgy, um, 
which which we'll have announced by the in the first quarter of 2012. Then we have to start looking at the overall economics of this, and as you mentioned, we are looking at producing a uh, preliminary economic assessment report. This is an external independent report prepared by an engineering firm, and essentially it takes into uh, account the uh, the new resource calculation that we will have have concluded this first quarter. It will take into account the metallurgical results, which we'll have this first quarter. And then it will also start looking at the overall market for niobium, and it will also look at uh, potential mining methods for the niobium as well. So this is sort of the first crack at the economics of the deposit uh, from an independent source. Um, obviously, prior to entering into this, uh, we've done our own internal calculations, but with regulatory processes the way they are. Um, internal reports are not considered independent, so of course we can't publish those. Mm -hmm. But uh, suffice to say, um, the numbers are attractive enough that, that we're uh, going through a fairly uh, expensive process of having a third party look at those numbers so that we can publish them. Well, thank you, Matt.